This is Joe Basquez with a special report for Footwasher Media here at ESC Boston. And with me is Dwayne Benson. He is the marketing manager, director of marketing? For Screaming Circuits. For Screaming Circuits. Okay, thanks. Um, tell me a little bit about Screaming Circuits and what it is you guys do. Well, what we do is we assemble prototypes, uh, put the parts on the boards. Um, we specialize in quick turns, small quantities. Our minimum quantity is one board. Our minimum turn time is 24 hours, and we do all of the complex componentry that you're seeing showing up these days, 0.4 millimeter pitch BGAs, O2, one passives, QFNs, all the little tiny complex things. Okay, no minimum runs or anything like that? Nope. We, we, uh, we, um, one is our minimum. Try and charge people for zero, but they don't want to pay for that. So we were just talking about an IPC report that said basically the volumes were up and sales were kind of flat, and we were talking about if, if you saw that. Tell me what you're seeing in the market right now in terms of numbers and, and your space particularly. Well, what we're seeing is we've actually seen quite a bit of growth in the, in the prototype assembly market um, over the last year and this year. Um, given that we're specializing in the prototype phase of it, we don't have quite as much visibility over overall the overall volume trends. But what we do see is a lot of different designs. We saw see a lot of new componentry being used. Uh, you know, I mentioned the, the small BGAs and QFNs. Um, that's been causing an awful lot of problems for design engineers because they can't really hand solder those things. Not only can they not hand solder them anymore, but um, the techniques used to, uh, uh, to lay the boards out um, are different than what they're used to. And uh, so, you know, they need an awful lot of help. Um, it's, more, it's a more difficult job for them to do. Interesting. That actually, your answer leads into my final question, which is, really fits nicely. And that was, I'm going to ask you to kind of put on your future looking glasses here for a few minutes. If you were to look out maybe two, three years, what do you think is the biggest challenge? You know, we're at the Embedded Systems Conference. You see all these embedded systems and software all around. What do you think is the biggest challenge these guys will be facing in two to three years that maybe they're not facing right now? And this doesn't have to be in your space, just mm -hmm. in general. Well, I think there are two different things. Um, one of them is sort of a general trend in the electronics industry, the hardware development industry. And that is that um, um, for the last several years, we've been seeing support staffs shrinking. That's going to continue. It means these engineers are closer and closer to the end product. So engineers are having to not just design the schematic, but they're having to develop the uh, the layout as well. They're having to procure the parts. They're having to uh, sometimes even get the final production taken care of. And this is someone who's a very intelligent, very highly educated um, person, but was not necessarily trained in dealing with those specific uh, tasks. So it's more of the full chain. It's more of the full chain, and we're seeing more and more of that. Um, you know, small companies aren't hiring the people. Large companies are getting rid of the support staff. So we see that in you know the the, the full range of companies. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of the biggest issue. And then as I mentioned, the changing types of componentry. You know, years ago, if you wanted to use the latest uh, you know latest whatever component, you'd start out with a big through hole part. Once you figured out how to use it, you'd move to a smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. Now, if you want a Zigbee radio, it's a QFN. If you want a Bluetooth, it's a micro BGA, period. So you can't put off dealing with the small parts anymore. You have, you have to start out that way. And again, that's a big problem because there are a whole lot of considerations that you have to have with those small geometries that you don't have to worry about with bigger parts. So if you were to give some advice to somebody maybe just graduating, I'm assuming that would be something about learning about the full chain. Uh, learn about the full chain. Um, learn about both layout as well as uh, schematic uh, design. And the third thing, which I didn't really mention, is the proliferation of mixed signal. Learn about analog also. Sure. You can't be just digital. You can't be just analog. Learn about both. Great. Well, thank you for your time.